Let's consider an example system. So we see we have a pretty simple feedback configuration here. We have some forward gain, which is three over S times S plus one times S plus two. We then have unity feedback, which is being subtracted from our input. Our input we see has a value of one over S. So that indicates we have a unit step for our input. So our C of S then is going to be our unit step response. So we can use our equation from our feedback form from the previous unit, and we can say our equivalent transfer function is g over one plus g times h. And again, the reason we wanna do that is remember, we wanna look at the poles of our equivalent transfer function, g e q. So if we end up doing that for this function here, of course our h is just one. Sorry, let's see if I can get a better line here. So our h is just one. So we're going to end up with three in the numerator, and in the denominator we'll have s cubed plus 3s squared plus 2s plus 3. And so what we could do at this point is we could figure out the poles of this transfer function. So remember we've talked about ways to do that in MATLAB. You might have other ways to do that in a calculator, or you might like doing it by hand. So there's various ways we can find that. But if we were to find that, we would see that we have, of course, three poles. We expect three poles because this is a third order system. And our three poles are going to be located at points roughly here and here. So we have a complex pair there and then a real pole here. And so just to label some values, if you wanted to go through and confirm that these are the pole locations. So the real part of these complex poles is negative 0.164. The imaginary part is plus or minus j times 1.047. So this is minus j, 1.047. Uh, so notice this isn't to scale, of course. Uh, and then this third real pole over here is going to be 2.672. Okay, so we notice that all three of our poles are in the left half plane. So we know that our system should be stable. And so we could go through and we could, again, plot this in MATLAB. So we've talked about how to do that. If we do that, what we're going to get for our unit step response is something that looks like this. So it's an underdamped step response, but if we let time go on long enough, eventually that natural response is gonna to decay to zero, and we're gonna be at our final value, which in this case is one. All right, so now let's say we use the same system, but we just come in here and we adjust this gain value a little bit. So instead of having a three, we change that value to a seven. And so before we do that, let's just make a note here uh, explicitly that this system was stable. So if we change that value to a seven, what we're going to get is our new GEQ, which is still that G over one plus GH, is going to now be seven in our numerator divided by s cubed plus 3s squared plus 2s plus 7. All right, and again, we're still assuming we have that same input, that same step input, so we're looking at the unit step response. And so in this case, we could use whatever method we used before to figure out our pole locations, and we're gonna see that two of our poles are now in the right half plane. So we have a pole here, a pole here, and then that third pole is still a real pole like that. And just to put some values here, again, if you wanna confirm this by working through that yourself, the real part of these two complex poles is approximately 0.0434. So I've, again, not to scale, this is gonna be right on the right half side of that, that J omega axis. The imaginary part is going to be J 1.505, and down here we have minus J, 1.505, and our real pole is gonna be at a location of negative 3.087. So if we were to plot this response, we're gonna expect it to be unbounded because we notice over here, we have two poles in our right half plane. And so as long as we have at least one pole in our right half plane, we're gonna have some part of our response that's gonna be unbounded. And sure enough, if we go to plot this in something like MATLAB or something similar, our unit step response is going to look something more like this. So it's going to be growing as time goes on without bound. So it just keeps increasing. And so we would say that this system, of course, then would be unstable.
So now to sort of drive home a point that I made in the previous video, if we look at this equivalent transfer function, so our GEQ right here, we notice that this isn't flagged by either of our quick checks. So not flagged by either quick check. And so just to briefly recap what those were, we see we're not missing any terms. We have a cubed, a squared, a one, and an s to the zero term, so no terms are missing, so it's not unstable based on that merit. We also see that the coefficients in that polynomial all have the same sign, so we have a plus one coefficient, a plus three, a plus two, and a plus seven. So all coefficients have the same sign. And so again, all that that's telling us is we can't immediately say the system is unstable. It does not mean that our system is stable. So as we see here, even though it didn't get flagged by those two quick checks, the system was in fact still unstable. And again, what this is pointing us towards is the fact that we need a more detailed method to check stability. So we need more detailed, let's see if I can spell, there we go, more detailed method to check stability. And so that's what we're gonna do in the following video. We're gonna introduce that method and then we're gonna spend a lot of time sort of practicing with it and looking at some specific cases where we have sort of something come up that, that kind of upsets that, uh, the basic example.